is the 24th lecture on DSP and our topic today is analog Chebyshev low pass filter design. In the last lecture that is 23rd lecture, we talked about the Butterworth filter. We first talked about the motivation for analog filter design in a course on DSP and then he said we only discuss low pass filter because all other kinds of filter can be obtained by transformation of a low pass filter. And then we discuss the characteristics of Butterward. Butterward is monotonic, it is maximally flat at omega equal to 0, its asymptotic slope is 6 n decibels per octave or 20 n decibels per decade. That is true about any all pole low pass filter. The asymptotic slope question that is true about any all pole low pass filter. If we have s to the n plus etcetera, then as omega tends to infinity, all such transfer functions shall have an asymptotic slope of 6 n decibels per octave. Okay. So, it is nothing special about Butterworth. Then we discuss the pole locations. The pole locations were in a circle of radius capital omega sub c in the S plane and the pole factors were either S plus omega c if the order is odd or a continued product of S squared plus B k omega c s plus omega c squared continued product of this. And if capital N is odd, then the transfer function would be of the form omega c to the power n and this would be k equal to 1 to n minus 1 divided by 2. This is h a of s if capital N is odd and if capital N is even then we shall have omega c to the n divided by continued product k equal to 1 2 n by 2 s squared plus b k omega c s plus omega c squared where this constant b k you do not have to find anything else you just find out b k as sign of twice sin of 2 k minus 1 pi divided by 2 n. The range of k has already been specified, so there is no problem. So, all that you have to determine for Butterworth is omega c and capital N. And in general, capital N shall be determined from delta p, omega p, delta s, and omega s. Okay. And capital N is greater than equal to the formula that we derived is very easy to prove. There was a 2 here log 10 of omega s divided by omega p and in the numerator it was log 10 of <coughs> 1 by delta p squared minus 1 and in the numerator 1 by delta s squared minus 1. For reasons to be made clear a little later, <coughs> if we take this 2 in the numerator all right, then it will be half log 10 this and half we can absorb here by taking a square root sign. This is the formula that we shall use because of reasons to be made clear a little later. This is N B Butterworth. <coughs> we shall refer to it later also. Okay. It is a ratio of 2 logs and one of them contains the tolerances in this pass band and stop band and the other contains the stop band to pass band edge ratio.
and then we had taken an example. Example was <coughs> omega c was equal to 1000 pi and omega s was equal to 2000 pi. Okay. Attenuation in stop band, this is how it is specified. Attenuation in stop band greater than equal to 40 decibel which gives rise to delta S as equal to 10 to the minus 2 alright <coughs> and therefore N B is greater than equal to no half log 10 of square root of 1 by delta P squared is 2 minus 1 so that is 1. 2 minus 1 and this would be 10 to the power 4 minus 1 divided by log 10 of the ratio is 2 log 10 of 2 and the right hand side <coughs> calculates out to 6.64 therefore the order of the Butterworth filter needed is 7. With this obviously omega s realized would be lower than the specified agreed <coughs> we do not have to find omega c omega c is already given all right otherwise if omega c was not given then what would you have done first find omega c why do you find omega c what is the need the transfer function is expressed in terms of omega c, the pole factors they involve omega c. So, omega c has to be found out all right. If n b is 7 then obviously the realized omega s that is the age of the stop band would be given by 1 plus omega s prime divided by omega c to the power 2 n I want to find out exactly where the stop bend edge occurs if that is called omega s prime then this should be equal to how much delta s square that is 10 to the power minus 4 and if you solve this if you solve this then the omega s double prime comes out my calculation 1930.6 pi instead of 2000 pi. So, it occurs earlier and one should be happy about it that you have over satisfied the stop band all right and in addition now you can find out H A of S <coughs> that would be omega c to the power numerator would be omega c to the power 7 s plus omega c omega c is 1000 pi then s squared plus b 1 omega c s plus omega c squared s squared plus b 2 omega c s plus omega c squared multiplied by s squared plus b 3 omega c s plus omega c squared and you have to find out b1 b2 and b3 b1 would be equal to twice do not forget this factor twice sine pi by 14 b2 would be twice sine 3 pi by 14 and b3 equal to twice sine 5 pi by 14 after a while after a while you will lose contact with who is Butterworth and what is the filter and so on you will be able to do it almost blindly and it can be very easily programmed given the order and omega c you can always find the transfer function. <coughs> okay, That is about Butterworth now let us go to Chebyshev, Chebyshev filter The spelling of Chebyshev is quite complicated. Um, the, this is the American 
<coughs> simplification. Chebyshev. Actual spelling is T S C H Y B E C H E F F. Well, we'll 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 use the American spelling. Okay, Chebyshev. Chebyshev L P F. Chebyshev L P F. <coughs> has the distinctive characteristic that if elliptic filters are excluded then Chebyshev LPF is the optimum one. Optimum one always is the elliptic filter. If they are excluded because elliptic filters are complicated to design, Chebyshev LPF is almost always preferred. It is the optimum. Optimum means that for a given omega p that for a given capital N and delta p and delta s for a given order and the same tolerance the Chebyshev LPF of all filters that are possible of all all pole filters that are possible this will give the narrowest transition width narrowest transition band. <coughs> it can also be specified, <coughs> it can also be uh, qualified or characterized in alternative ways. For example, if capital N transition band and delta P are specified, it will give the lowest delta S. All right. So, it is a combination of them, but this is the optimum filter. And the characteristic is that instead of monotonicity as in Butterworth filter it is <coughs> it ripples in the pass band that is the characteristic is something like this. This is 1 delta P delta S omega P omega S omega it ripples in the pass band that is something like this. I am intentionally not showing omega equal to 0 because it differs on differs according to the evenness or oddness of the transfer function. So, it, it, it ripples and it executes equal ripples in the pass band and it is monotonic in the stop band. Okay? So, it is unlike Butterworth, it is not monotonic filter, it has maxima and minima but between two limits the maxima re reach equal amplitudes the minima reach equal amplitudes. So, it is an equal ripple which is sometimes abbreviated as equiripple, <coughs> equiripple in the pass band and monotonic in the stop band. There can also be another type of Chebyshev that is we can reverse the roles. We can have monotonic in the pass band and equal ripple in the stop band. This type is called type 1 and the inverse Chebyshev filter that is monotonic in the pass band and equal ripple in the stop band is called a type 2 filter. Obviously, type 1 is the preferred filter. Why? Because a stop band is stop band. Once we have specified one delta S and once we have satisfied this, one should not bother whether there are ripples or not in the stop band. So, we shall discuss only type 1. Type 1 is the most favored optimum low pass filter provided you exclude elliptic filters from your field of view. <coughs> the transfer function of the magnitude function of a Chebyshev filter is given by capital A, it is not 1 now, it is capital A divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon squared epsilon is a constant, capital A is a constant, C n squared, capital N is the order, omega by omega p. 
this is the <coughs> form of the magnitude function if you square it a square divided by this quantity <coughs> where c sub capital n c n x we call omega by omega p as x is the Chebyshev polynomial Chebyshev polynomial and is defined as cosine of n cosine inverse x for mod x less than 1 that is x between minus 1 and plus 1 and when x exceeds 1 cosine inverse loses its meaning cosine loses its meaning and therefore they are replaced by cos and this is the natural transition okay cos of n cos inverse x for mod x greater than 1. <coughs> now <coughs> you know that cosine function is oscillatory and this is what gives rise to oscillations or ripples in the pass bend for mod x less than 1 that is omega between minus omega p and plus omega p and the magnitude function is even and therefore it suffices to consider 0 to omega p and for mod x greater than 1 that is omega greater than omega p cos function is monotonic and therefore the characteristic the magnitude characteristic shall be monotonic beyond the pass band in the pass band it will be oscillatory beyond the stop band it shall be monotonic which is the characteristic of the Chebyshev filter. Now notice that <coughs> let us get familiarized with this Chebyshev polynomials notice that C0 of x if capital N is put equal to 0 it is simply equal to 1 agreed C1 of x C1 of x cosine of cosine inverse x obviously is equal to x c2 of x shall be equal to now in order to find this out let us put cosine inverse x equal to theta then cosine theta is equal to x and therefore c2 of x would be cosine of twice theta which is twice cosine square theta minus 1 that is equal to twice x square minus 1 ultimately our interest is in the variable x. Similarly C3 of x which is cosine of 3 theta is 4 cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta and therefore C3 of x is 4 x cubed minus 3 x. Does that mean that we shall have to remember all the multiple angle formulas? No we can find a recurrence relationship and the recurrence relationship comes from this cosine of n theta plus cosine of n minus 2 theta if we apply the trigonometric formula cosine a plus cosine b is twice cosine a plus b by 2 cosine a minus b by 2. So, we get cosine of theta this is a minus b by 2 and then cosine of a plus b by 2 would be n minus 1 theta and therefore cosine n theta is nothing but c n of x if you put theta equal to cos inverse x then this c n of x so c n of x is equal to twice cosine theta is x cosine n minus theta is c n minus 1 of x minus this quantity taken to the right. So, c n minus 2 x for example, if capital N is 3 c 3 x this is equal to twice x c 2 x we have already found out 2 x square minus 1 minus c 1 x which is 1 and therefore this is 4x cubed minus 3x which agrees with the previous result. In a similar way you can find out c4 of x 
<coughs> as how much 2x 4x cubed minus 3x minus c2 of x so 2x squared minus 1 that is equal to 8x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 1 agreed. Now if you collect this uh, all that we require now is C0 x was 1, C1 x was equal to x and C2 x was equal to twice x square minus 1. Agreed? You notice a pattern that is if the order is odd then the polynomial itself is odd, right? C1 is x is x, C3 x is 4 x cubed minus 3 x, so it is an odd polynomial. On the other hand, if the order is even, then the polynomial is also even. 1, 2 x square minus 1, then uh, 8 x 4 minus 8 x square plus 1. You understand? And you notice that C n of 0 has to be equal to 0 if n is odd, right? because C n x is odd polynomial for capital N odd and this is equal to plus or minus 1 if n is even, is not that right? C 2 of 0 is minus 1 but C 4 of 0 is plus 1, okay? So it is either minus 1 or plus 1. So we learn two things, one is that if capital N is even, the polynomial is even, capital N is odd, polynomial is odd and because of even or odd characteristic, the behavior at x equal to 0, the value is either 0 or plus minus 1 depending on whether capital N is odd or even. Now a, a picture <coughs> is a better indicator of these properties draw this picture, draw a square and divide into four equal parts. We plot C and X in this direction and X in this direction. <coughs> this is minus 1 and this is plus 1. C and X is plus 1 here and minus 1 here. Okay. Then C0 of x is the brown line, C0. C1 of x is x and therefore it is a straight line passing through the origin. This is C1. C2 is 2x squared minus 1 and therefore it uh, it starts from plus 1, x equal to minus 1 is plus 1 and at x equal to 0 it is minus 1, so it goes like this. This is C2. C3 at x equal to 0 it is 0, but where does it start from? C3 of minus 1, yes? Where does it start from? Minus one. minus 1. So it starts from here. I should use another pen. Okay. It starts from here, then it must pass to this. So it goes like this. This is C3. C4 starts from plus 1 and uh, I have run out of color. No, I have one more. It starts from plus 1, sure? 8x4 minus 8x square. So plus 1 goes like this. Then at x equal to 0, it is plus 1. So it goes like this and then comes like this and okay. 
the green one is C4. You do not have colors, but I think you can understand what I am drawing. Beyond this, that is when small x exceeds 1 or small x goes below, below minus 1, it is monotonic. That is, if it is the if it is this curve, then it will, it will monotonically decrease like this, monotonically increase like this, okay, because cosine function is taken over by cosine hyperbolic function. Now, the equal ripple oscillation is obvious from here, right, between x equal to minus 1 and plus 1. Now, our concern is between 0 and plus 1. We only consider positive frequencies and 0 for x shall correspond to capital omega equal to 0 plus 1 for x shall correspond to capital omega equal to omega p and therefore and therefore if we consider the transfer function that is h a j omega magnitude equal to 1 a capital a divided by 1 plus epsilon squared C n squared omega by omega p square root of this, all right. <coughs> then the maximum h a j omega magnitude shall obviously lie between two maxima for mod omega less than omega p since we are considering only positive frequencies 0 less than equal to less omega p. In this range because C n is oscillating what is the minimum value of C n squared? Minimum value of C n squared minimum value of C n is minus 1 but it is 0. Therefore, when it is 0 obviously the magnitude no it is here the upper limit. The lower limit when C n is plus 1 or minus 1 then we shall get capital A divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon square agreed. And if capital A is normalized to 1 is normalized to 1 then it shall lie between 1 and this is what we want capital A is taken as 1 then it shall lie between 1 and square root of 1 by 1 plus epsilon squared. Okay. Now, let us draw a few typical magnitude characteristics starting with capital N equal to 1. <coughs> let us see. this is 1, this is 1 by square root 1 plus epsilon square that is the minimum value. This is a capital H A J omega magnitude, this is omega P and this is omega S and this quantity is delta S. So, let us see capital N equal to 1, 1 is odd capital N is odd. If it is odd then at omega equal to 0 the value is 0 and therefore the magnitude shall be shall be 1 or this value. It is epsilon squared C n squared omega by omega p at omega equal to 0 it is 0 and therefore it is 1. In other words it starts from this and goes like this. The answer should have been obvious first order filter either Butterworth or Chebyshev it is the same because the transfer function is omega c divided by s plus or s omega p divided by s plus omega p that is all. Whether it is Butterworth or Chebyshev it is the same all right. Now second order for second order obviously <coughs> at omega equal to 0 C n squared is 1 and therefore it starts from here and goes like this.
you notice that at omega equal to omega p at omega equal to omega p cn squared of 1 is always 1 cn squared of 1 is always 1 shall we go back to the okay cn of 1 plus 1 or minus 1 can be either plus 1 or minus 1 but cn squared of 1 is always plus 1 and therefore irrespective of the order all characteristics must pass through this point exactly like Butterworth filters. This is the edge of the pass pen they must pass through this point in our case it can it 1 by 1 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon squared in Chebyshev case can be different from 1 by root 2. It is equal to 1 by root 2 and epsilon is equal to 1 agreed. So, this is n equal to 2. If we have n equal to 3 again odd therefore, it must start from here go like this it has to pass through this point. So, it must pass through another maximum and so on and go like this all right this is 3 this is 2 and this is 1. So, shall we go through another n equal to 4 n equal to 4 it must go pass from here then here another maximum and so on it has become a little congested. But it proves one point <coughs> that is the number of peaks and dips in the pass point is exactly equal to the order all right considering omega equal to 0 as either a peak or a deep because omega equal to 0 the, the, the function is even and therefore, if the if it starts from 1 then, then the function must be like this. If it goes from 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square the function on the other side must be even and therefore, this is also a point of maximum or minimum. If you take capital N equal to 3 1 2 3. If you take capital N equal to 4 1 2 3 4. So, the number of maxima and minima in the pass band is equal to capital N is equal to the order of the filter and if capital N is even then starting point is 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon squared. If capital N is odd then the starting point is 1 starting point means at omega equal to 0 agreed. If you remember this then we can proceed further. <coughs> it can be shown that the poles in this case uh, before we go to the poles if someone asks you to find out the 3 dB frequency of a Chebyshev filter 3 dB frequency is a very important factor in Butterworth filters it is not so in Chebyshev in Chebyshev omega p and epsilon are arbitrary ok omega p and epsilon are arbitrary. If someone asks you to find out the 3 dB frequency then obviously, the equation defining the 3 dB frequency would be 1 plus C n squared let us call the omega 3 dB as omega 3 divided by omega p that should be equal to 1 by 2 and therefore, C n squared omega 3 by omega p shall be equal to epsilon square right epsilon square yes I cannot miss that and therefore, C n of omega 3 divided by omega p would be equal to 1 by epsilon I can take plus minus then I will find plus omega 3 and minus omega 3 but let us take plus that is 
Now 1 by epsilon shall be greater than 1, is not that right? Epsilon normally is a very small quantity, 1 by epsilon is greater than 1 and therefore for C n I should use I should use cos. C n squared, I have taken the square root of it. Next equation C n of omega 3 by omega p okay, is equal to 1 by epsilon. So, cos h n cos inverse omega 3 by omega p is equal to 1 over epsilon from which you can find out the, the, the expression for omega 3 that should be equal to cos inverse 1 by epsilon then 1 over n and then cos the whole thing multiplied by omega p. This is the expression for the 3 dB frequency. It is just out of curiosity what is the 3 dB frequency. Obviously that will be greater than omega p if epsilon is less than 1. All right. Next the question of poles and pole factors. Obviously the poles will satisfy 1 plus C n squared S divided by J omega P is equal to epsilon squared I must not forget is equal to 0. And this turns out to be a lot of complex algebra which we shall not go into but the end result is that the poles are located on an ellipse instead of a circle in the Butterworth case. Poles are located on an ellipse and the pole locations are such that finally the transfer function H A of S we shall simply give the results has factors of S plus omega P times C0. In the Butterworth case, we had simply S plus omega C. In this case, it is omega P multiplied by another constant which I will give and such a factor shall arise in the denominator only when the order is odd. And the other factors are S squared plus B k, B k's are different we shall illustrate them a little later, B k omega P s plus C k omega P squared. These are the pole factors, these are the factors in the denominator. In other words, when capital N is odd, H a of s is equal to s plus omega p c0 multiplied by continued product s squared plus b k omega p s plus c k omega p squared k equal to 1 2 yes n minus 1 by 2 and the numerator shall be omega p to the power n all right c0 continued product of c k k equal to 1 to n minus 1 divided by 2 we have brought all the all the <coughs> numerator constants in the all the denominator constant in the numerator so the dc value of this transfer function would be equal to 1. For an odd Chebyshev filter, what is the DC value? Odd order Chebyshev filter, what is the DC value? 1. Agreed? So we have constructed the transfer function. What C0, CK and BKs are, I am going to give you in a minute. But if the order is even, now this is the difference. If the order is even, 
capital N is even then H A of S is equal to continued product S squared plus B K omega P S plus C K omega P squared K equal to 1 to capital N by 2 and in the numerator we shall get omega P to the power N then continued product C K K equal to 1 to capital N by 2 all right that makes the DC value equal to 1, but for capital N even DC value is 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square. So, you shall have to multiply by this term. Is that point clear? If, if the order is odd, the magnitude starts from 1. If the order is even, magnitude starts from 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon squared. All these constants were required to make the magnitude equal to 1 without this factor. So, this factor has to be added. You have to proceed with caution, but if you understand this, uh, those two pictures if you remember, okay. Now, it is <coughs> time Factor A was taken as 1, the maximum value. You see, we wrote capital A divided by 1 plus epsilon squared Cn squared omega by omega P H A J omega magnitude square, let us say, S squared divided by this. We had taken capital A as 1 because we wanted the maximum value to be 1, okay. one less than I beg your pardon 1 by square root 1 plus epsilon square less than equal to magnitude h a j omega less than equal to 1. So, capital A is 1. Okay, now it is time to tell you what these B k's and C k's are. Uh, <coughs> these formulas keep it in a prominent place C 0 we define as y n, y n C 0 we have not yet found out, but we define it to be equal to y n to indicate that it is a characteristic of the order of the filter, y n differs from filter to filter, it is not uh, well that is it, it is it differs from it, it only depends on the order. Then C k is y n squared plus cosine squared 2 k minus 1 pi divided by 2 n. If you remember this angle, it is familiar, it is the Butterworth angle, is not it? Butterworth filters were expressed in terms of sine of 2 k minus 1 pi by 2 n. Here, because we require a constant in the constant term of the denominator factor also, the constant term turns out to be this. They can all be derived, but there is lot of algebra involved. I will not go into that. And B k in the previous case, it was simply 2 in Butterworth case, it was 2 sin 2 k minus 1 pi divided by 2 n. In our case, in Chebyshev case, it is multiplied by y n. And these multiplications and the value of C k, in Butterworth case, C k's were 1, right? Whereas in B k's were twice this. The factor y n comes because of the shrinking of the circle into an ellipse. It is as if you press from the two sides and it elongates and shrinks in the middle. Okay. Finally, what is y n? y n, this requires a little bit more calculation, but it is not too difficult. y n is half of uh, square root of 1 plus 1 by epsilon square plus 1 over epsilon to the power 1 by n minus the same quantity 
same quantity to the power minus 1 over n. Let us make this curly bracket. This is the expression for y n and given capital N and epsilon you can find out the transfer function. Okay? Capital N and epsilon are the only two parameters of a Chebyshev filter. Once you know them you can find out the transfer function. As an example, is it okay? Have you been? Okay. As an example, suppose capital N is equal to 4 and epsilon equal to 0 0.8. Then the calculation proceeds like this. You can make a small program. First you find out Y of N. Y of N is equal to half square root of 1 plus 1 by epsilon square that is 1 by 0 0.64 plus 1 by 0 0.8 to the power 1 quarter minus the same quantity to the power minus 1 quarter requires a little bit of calculator calculation do not get mixed. This sign is positive in both of them it is an identical factor and this works out to my calculation 0 0.26490. This 0 is significant. I could have omitted this but it shows that I have calculated up to correct up to 5 places of decimals. Okay? This is Yn and once you find Yn all that you have to find now Yn is the same as C0. So, you have to find out n equal to 4 therefore, on 2 b's and 2 c's. Okay. B1 is equal to twice y4, y4 has already been calculated sin of pi by 8 and that comes out as 0 0.20275. C1 is equal to y4 squared plus cosine squared pi by 8 and that calculates as it is no longer possible to keep them as fractions unfortunately. It uh, comes out as 0 0.92373 at least go up to 5 places of decimals. B2 is equal to twice y4 sin of 3 pi by 8 and that comes out as 0 0.48947 and C2 is y4 squared plus cosine squared pi by 8 3 pi by 8 yes that comes as 0 0.21 All right. So, the problem now is to find how to find how to find capital N and epsilon from the given specs. Well, the specs are the usual specs delta P 1 omega P omega S and delta S. Okay. Obviously, if delta p is known then you know what is epsilon right 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square is equal to delta p right. Therefore, epsilon is equal to square root of 1 by delta p squared minus 1 right if you square it and take the reciprocal this is what it is this is epsilon and therefore my stop bend specification says that 1 plus epsilon squared c n squared omega s divided by omega p should be equal to delta s right 
square. Correct. Delta S square. And therefore, epsilon squared C n squared omega S divided by omega P should be equal to 1 by delta S squared minus 1 or C n of omega S divided by omega P should be equal to 1 by epsilon times this and square root square root of this. So, I can write this as now note this 1 by delta S squared minus 1 divided by and I put the value of epsilon 1 by delta P squared minus 1. Have not you got the same factor as in Butterworth? Right? Now, what is C n? C n is cos is it cosine or cos at omega s omega s is greater than omega p and therefore it should be cos of n cos inverse omega s divided by omega p is equal to this factor right hand side therefore capital n is equal to yes can i write this now cos inverse this factor divided by cos inverse omega s divided by omega p. Is it okay? I did not write this again and again, it is the same factor here. So, capital N the order is given by cos inverse this quantity divide by cos inverse omega s by omega p and if you compare with Butterworth that is why that is when we use the symbol the subscript capital C order of Chebyshev is a ratio of two cos inverses. The arguments are the same as in Butterworth except that in Butterworth cos inverse is replaced by log. Log is available on the calculator cos inverse is not available in all calculators and therefore, for computing cos inverse you shall have to use a log table, a table of or a, a mathematical handbook. Some computers have cos inverse, but this is the formula. One can, uh, one can argue that if I know uh, well, what I require is C n squared omega s by omega p should be equal to 1 by epsilon squared 1 by delta s squared minus 1. This was one of our intermediate equations. If you do not have access to cos inverse, then what you do is you know omega s by omega p and you know the right hand side. Okay? You know the right hand side. You, you have a numerical value for this. So, you have C n squared of a known quantity, then you try capital N, try values of capital N, try from let us say capital N equal to 2. If the right hand side is less, then you increment capital N by 1. This can also be programmed, increment N to N plus N equal to N plus 1 and then go on doing this till the left hand side exceeds the right hand side. There is no guarantee that they will be equal. In other words, this formula for capital N sub C should also be written with greater than equal to. Agreed? So, if you do not have access to cos inverse table or the calculator does not have cos inverse, then you try the formula, then you try the relationship satisfied in the at the edge of the stop band. And since this is known, this is known you can find out capital N by iteration. Try values till the left hand side exceeds the right hand side. It may exceed drastically. Okay? For example, C n squared of 2, how much is this? Uh, if n equal to 2. 
if capital N equal to 2, what is Cn of 2? 2 x squared minus 1, so 8 minus 1, 7. This would be 49. On the other hand, the right hand side may be, may be 4 or 9. You, you may have to exceed drastically, but nevertheless, this is desirable because you are over satisfying the stop band specs. Okay. Next time, we will take a few examples and also we shall consider how low pass filters can be transformed to any other kind of filter. Thank <laughs> you.